recording started. All right, so this is the East Hampton Affordable and Fair Housing Partnership. It is Thursday, June 25th, and it is 6 p.m. Uh, I need to read a statement to you before we start the meeting. Wait, let me find it. Uh, the City of East Hampton would like to remind everyone that wearing your mask when you can not maintain at least six feet of social distancing is still very important to prevent a surge of COVID-19 and the need to go back to stricter precautions. Please wear your mask, maintain your space, and wash your hands. Okay. Who's uh, the uh, It's from the mayor's office. Okay. And I, we were, I was asked to read it at the beginning of all public meetings. Um, all right. On our agenda. Oh, on our agenda is to approve the April and May meeting notes. Um, so we were a little bit behind. Did anyone have a chance to read them? I did. I had one um, Scribner's error that we need to change, which is just that Ken's last name is misspelled. Um, oh. The May minutes, it's just missing the last oh. letter of his name. But aside from that, they looked good to me. And I'm happy to make a motion to approve. I, you're going to second, Connie? Um, I can second. I think Connie seconded. Oh, sorry. She went like this. <laughs> or she was telling us peace. <laughs> um, all right. Do we have to do a roll call? I'm not good at the voting. We can. Okay. So uh, are we? Oh, so I should probably do the. Can we? Do we need to do them separately, or is it okay to do them together? Together is fine. Yeah. Okay. Thanks, Jamie. Um, all right. All those in favor? Um, Jackie. Aye. Aye. Yeah. Connie got her hand up. Jana. Aye. Okay. Thank you. I will say I will correct Ken's last name on the main minutes and I will send them to Barbara. Great. Um, all right, I'm just looking at the agenda. Um, all right, so I forgot to put on the agenda the Facebook discussion. So we'll do that at the end um, under, under other, other updates. But I did want to, uh, who wants to give an update on the CPA Emergency Rental Assistance Program? Jackie? Would you I will in one second, but I'm typing. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so it was um, it was a really, really long meeting for the city council, like six hours of long. Mm -hmm. um, actually, Brad and Connie were both there too. So, and our piece was about this much of it. Actually, Jana, you were, we were all there. We were all there. Yeah, so I forgot the word eviction. As I was trying to talk about it, I had COVID brain and it just went out of my head. And I was like, when landlords try to kick people out. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, so Dan Rist called on me to talk about the program. I did. Um, the city council, a bunch of members um, spoke up in favor. It passed unanimously. There were some good points raised by folks in the community. I also noticed that there were some people who hopefully we should go back and collect the names of the people who spoke in favor because that would be good for our list of people who will speak out in favor of affordable housing. That's a good idea. Um, yep. There was a question at the end that was like, if this is only serving 80 households, what if there's a lot more who need it? To which I, of course, said, we'll go back and ask for more money. Right. right. So. Um, Jamie, do you have an update on the procurement process? Um, I um, have been working on trying to finish up the RFP uh, to get it to Mike Owens and out to bid it. So, other things came up this week that delayed me, and so I haven't finished that yet. Um, but my hope is to get that uh, out early next week uh, to to, uh, to the uh, public. Um, do anyone on the committee want to see it before it becomes finalized, or do we just want to go up, go forward with it at this point? Yeah, we're sorry. Where's it going? Where's it going? 
Um, so it's going to be posted, once it's finalized, it's going to be posted on the city's website. Um, and then we're also going to, I'm going to personally email it to uh, the contacts that I have at um, the organizations that, uh, the area organizations that we think would be likely to bid on it. Um, so that's going to be um, Valley, uh, Wayfinders, Community Action, Pioneer Valley Planning Commission, Hilltown CDC. Great. Um, and I've gotten a couple of um, just people who have asked about it, um, so they'll also get it as well. Um, being individuals, I don't find me to um, name them. <laughs> um, and, um, and when is it due? So we're going to get two weeks. Um, I believe for the RFP to come back and just double check that. Um, July 15th. Um, but in the, in the uh, CPA proposal, um, it said three weeks for RFP response to, uh, to respond to the RFP. Um, three weeks? Three weeks. Does that make sense, everyone? Should we make it two or four? Is it a lengthy application? Um, I mean, it's, it's an RFP, like, we're asking for a bunch of information. So I, I think it would be a little bit onerous if we're only giving two weeks. Um, I thought you said two weeks. Did you actually say three before? And in, in, in the application we said, in the CPA application, we, said we put in three into the schedule. Okay, that's fine. But if, if two was reasonable and three seems too much, I don't, I don't know because I've never responded to an RFP um, like this. So, um, is there uh, any harm in in it being four weeks? Well, just the longer that we take to get the responses, the longer that we take to start the project. Right, true. Right. Okay. So, but I don't, I don't want to rush this part of it and have people not respond because we decided to shave a week off of, or, or, you know. Um, I, I don't know if anyone here has any experience with, with responding to these types of RFPs. Well, I can tell you that Amherst had a two-week turnaround period and got four responses, three responses. Okay. Um, their application was not very long. I will have to say, like, it. Uh, I think our response was four pages plus a whole bunch of, like, resumes that we had to submit. So yeah. it just depends on how, like, complicated the application is. But um, I think... So I think two or three weeks is probably sufficient. Um, well, since it's summer, why don't we just say three weeks because we know that summer takes longer for some reason. Yeah. Okay. And work from home takes longer for lots of reasons. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Everything. Okay. Yeah. okay. Um, uh, there was, um, I spoke with the Gazette reporter, Vera Juno. Um, on Friday after Thursday or Friday after after the city council meeting, but I don't know. I haven't looked at the Gazette recently, but I believe there was an article on Saturday about the yeah, program. Yep. Yeah, and then I um, I got a text from one of the city councilors over the weekend, I think, asking if I'd be willing to talk to someone from the Gazette, and of course I said yes, but I never heard from them. But. Mm. Okay. Happy to do it if they reach out. Yeah, there was, I just, I saw the article posted on my Facebook feed and then it was posted on, I think Ken posted it to the East Hampton math page, yep. uh, which warranted a mixed bag of responses. Well, as always. <laughs> um, but yeah, it was, a, I mean, it wasn't a very long article, but it was, I think, factual and mm -hmm. um, so. Yeah. Um, good, it's exciting. Yeah. yeah. 
Thank you all for coming to the meeting, breaking the, the, the weather. Thank you, Jackie, for speaking. Of course. For, speaking, for helping to develop the art group. I was, it was really you and Kate. Well, it was really a group effort. And I would not have been able to do it with, a, with both, both your folks. I didn't realize that the city council meeting was going to have so many agenda items on it. So I like get on and then I'm like, Jackie, where are you? We were like, I'm not getting on. It's like, I'm making dinner actually. And I'll get on later. And, then, and I did just in time. And then Dan Rist jumped. He like, I thought it was going to come up faster. And I'm like, it's coming up. It's coming up. And then like an hour later, we were still talking about the fire department. And I was like, Oh, shoot. I had been in the finance committee meeting. Yes, it was not going to be quick. Um, yeah. Was it really six hours, though, after we hung up? Mm -hmm. That's terrible. Like the, would that have happened in person or only because it was on Zoom? Good question. They were um, talking about other, other um, proposed cuts to the budget. Yeah. So... Yeah, hard to say. Um, all right. Well, I Let's hear it for engaged democracy. <laughs> I, yeah, there were like 115 people on that. On the, I mean, yeah, 115 people don't usually go to the city council meetings. I don't think. So. <laughs> no. Uh, virtual meetings have their benefits, I suppose. Um, all right. Are we good on this topic? We all feel we're good. We're. Anything else we need to know, Jamie? Um, I'll also email the partnership with the RP when it goes out. Um, so if you have contacts that you want to share it with, uh, I'll post it on your web page. I, I have. I think there has been some con confusion um, between with members of the public with like the funding, the, the program, and like the grant grant actually starting. Or, so I have fielded a couple of requests for the application um, from individuals looking to, to apply. Um, and so obviously mm. that's not ready yet. So if we do, if you do share it on your Facebook or if you want to um, anything like that, I think making clear that it's the RFP to manage the program and not the application. Mm -hmm. Okay. Which reminds me of something I did want to mention, and I forgot. I did reach out to a bunch of landlords in the in town, mm -hmm. and most of them did say their people seem to be doing okay now, but they're all worried about what will happen when the moratorium is up, and when people still aren't working. Yeah. So that I told the folks that I spoke with that we would let them know when the applications for their tenants were available too. Yes. Um, maybe. Um, so you and you, Kate also spoke to a bunch of mm -hmm. landlords, correct? Yeah. Um, did anyone else speak to anyone or was it just the two of you? I think the plan, the, we had only planned for the two of us to do that. I don't know if okay. anybody else did. Okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I just, I talked to two landlords that I know just in the community. It was a really casual conversation. Um, pretty much all they said is kind of what you, you all heard it is. Um, you know, that there is some uh, uptick in, you know, missing rent payments or having rent coming in like a week or two weeks late. Um, so, you know, there's, there is some instability there, but it's not, it doesn't feel like, you know, the city's on fire kind of situation. So it's, I guess, better than what I thought it would be. Yeah. That's good to hear. Mm -hmm. um, so the, the unemployment numbers I saw recently from March to April were quite scary. Yeah. Um, okay. Good. Well, the, who, the administrator will certainly have some marketing materials to distribute to the landlord. So that's a group. So that's good. Um, all right. Um, so... I guess uh, two other things to talk about is one is just to follow up on the Facebook page discussion we had last month where we were going back and forth about whether it made sense for the housing partnership to have its own Facebook page 
or if we should just take advantage of the planning department's Facebook page, which already has, you know, 1,500 subscribers and people who, you know, like can watch videos of Jeff Bag, you know, out and about detailing the Ferry Street project. <laughs> um, so uh, Kate and Ken both responded this after your yesterday or today that they couldn't be here tonight, but we're advocating that uh, we just use the planning department page. Um, so I don't know if other folks have feelings about that and want to weigh in. I think it makes sense. I think it make I, I think it makes sense because I don't think that we as a as a volunteer board will have enough content to post enough regularly enough for people to actually want to follow our page. Um, yeah. Plus, also with the time constraint, if there's already you know as you said 1,500 people on the other page, that's we don't have to build up that many people to get the word out first. So, seems fine to me. Okay. So maybe Jamie will, um, I mean, the CPA announcement obviously would be like a, the first one to, <laughs> the, the, the biggest one to post soon, but maybe we could, uh, we could come up with some, you know, monthly something that we want to post on the planning department page. Yeah. Um, I think at some point, a few months ago, we were discussing this um, and someone came up with the idea of maybe kind of pointing, nominating someone who's going to come up with the post in the next month yeah. to sort of, so that it doesn't just fall to everybody and no one at the same time. Mm -hmm. um, so um, if someone has anything, that comes across anything that's important to post, or, um, you can, if you send it to me, I, I, I will post on behalf of the Housing Partnership. Um, so I'm going to propose to start that in September, right? Okay. Because uh, we'll have a post for the CPA announcement, and then we usually don't meet in August. Um, I mean, I suppose we could because you know Connie's on vacation and we're still meeting, but I don't. We usually take August off, so um, so maybe we uh, could talk could start that in September. Whenever, whenever, whenever we want. Um, do, do people have a feeling about that? I think that makes sense, and I think I want to throw out two ideas and see what you guys think of them. So, Ken had sort of volunteered to be our social media person, mm -hmm. or maybe I volunteered him, and he eager, eagerly <laughs> said, "Sure." Um, so, what we, one thing we could think about is if we see things in our day to day that like we come across an article about affordable housing that's really really good we send those to ken and ken and we'll ask him obviously if he's willing to do this but maybe he collects them and like feeds them yeah, to jamie idea. i don't know but we could all just kind of try to stay on top of as we're searching through all of our stuff if we see something that looks useful um, from an education perspective for the general public because i think that's the issue most of the time right Mm -hmm. um, it'd be cool to like roll out that video again that we did with East Hampton Media just every once in a while to pop it onto the planning department page because it's still valid. Um, yeah. Yes. Okay. That makes sense. I, I, so um, early on, Jessica and I, when we were starting the Facebook page, uh, she was posting a lot of articles and news related things um, and found that they didn't generate a lot of likes or activity. Mm -hmm. um, so I'm not saying we shouldn't do that, but just having, if, if there's any content that we can create that's new content is going to have um, better click through than Here's an article that here's a, yeah here's an article in the Atlantic about the national housing market. Right, I think it, I think it has to, I think that's right, Jamie, and like it makes sense for it to be kind of timely and local to the extent that it can be. Um, 
and I typically try to write one column a year for the Gazette on affordable mm -hmm. housing stuff. So I don't know when that one's coming up again, but it will. Well, and it also seems like, um, you know, other than the CPA program, we also have the housing market study. So, you know, mm -hmm. Jim's going to join us at our July meeting on July 23rd. Um, and, and, and that might also generate some um, content that, uh, you know, there's going to be a community survey on housing, right, I think, and some other things that, um, so those will all, I mean, the planning department would likely post those anyway, but I think that they're, you know, still relevant to the housing partnership. And so um, I think that'll help generate some content too. Um, okay. Well, let's talk about this again, maybe for a few minutes at the July 23rd meeting, if we have time, just so that we can um, make sure Ken's okay <laughs> with us giving him that task. Uh, and, uh, but, um, I mean, alternatively, we could just all feed stuff to Jamie when we find it. And then Jamie can decide if you feel comfortable doing that, like, oh, sure, this looks good. Let's post it. I don't know. It's It just seems like we don't want to... We don't need this body to vet everything that goes, right? And I think, but I'll just say, you know, starting in September, I think we should have a goal of posting at least once a month. But if we want to post more than once a month, that's fine too. And if we want to start before then, if something comes up before then that we want to talk, like, that's fine. We're not, we don't have to, you know, limit it to, oh, well, there's, we're going to be a post about the emergency rental assistance program. So that's, that's the only thing we can post about this summer. We can post about other things too. Um, I'm on a advisory committee. There's a greater Springfield affordable housing report card kind of report going on with UMass Donahue Institute um, that originally was just going to kind of focus on greater Springfield, but actually it focuses on the whole region. And so they're hoping to have some type of um, some kind of product done by the end of the summer, which might not be like a, like a traditional like written report, but might have like infographics and some interesting kinds of things. So that might, and that's so local, right? So it'll talk about Hampshire County um, and Franklin and Hampton County, um, which is really, it, it's really interesting because the counties are so different and have such different issues really. Mm -hmm. uh, so um, that, um, you know, I will have access to some of that stuff. So that would, could be kind of something interesting stuff to post. Um, but I like the idea of having a goal of at least posting once a month. Uh, it's also, right, our continued way to generate other people who are, like, so if people like it, then we can, like, keep track. And we them. hound them. <laughs> and then we can hound them later uh, so that we can build our, keep building our base. Um, Speaking of that, Jenna, are you, do you have a preliminary mail list or something like that that you're keeping track of? Yeah, there's like two people on it. I do. It's, it's, okay. uh, it's not long. <laughs> uh, well, you can add, the list, you but. could add Laura Britton because she did speak up at the city council meeting and we can follow up with her. And there was another woman who spoke up. I can't remember. Nice. This is from that the the thing that Jackie and I went to at New that City, City, where we just drank beer and hoped that people wanted to talk about affordable housing. <laughs> the beer was good. <laughs> we mostly just talked to other committee members from other place, other committees, but who were also drinking beer. Also drinking beer, hoping. Uh, it was a great idea, though. It was a good idea. Um, yeah, so I, I'll, I I just added Laura Britton, but oh, that reminds me of um, well, I can wait till we get to other things. Uh, we can close this item first, the Facebook page item. Does are it feel done? like? Are we done with Facebook? I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jackie, what is your other item? So the other item is um, a friend of mine who lives in town, whose husband owns a local business, um, sent me a message saying, hey, I might want to join a committee. Is the housing partnership something interesting to join? So I wrote her back and I was like, wait till I have some time and I'll circle back and we'll talk about why you want to do this.
So it's Colleen Del Vecchio. I don't know if any of you know her. Her husband is Dave Del Vecchio. He owns, I think they changed the name because it was Innovative Business Solutions for a while, which has a really bad acronym. Um, and Colleen worked at Smith. She worked at, at, I met her when she worked at UMass. And then she worked at Smith and she does career stuff. And now she's a consultant. Actually, Connie, Rebecca and Carol had her come and do a strengths finder thing with students a couple of years back. Hmm. So she'd be a good person to have. She's smart. Um, so I'll, I'll circle back to her. I don't have time, but I will find some. <laughs> I will make some time. Um, or you could invite her to the um, July 23rd committee meeting. meeting. Yeah. Um, where, and Judy will be here, so that might be kind of interesting because that'll be oh good about the housing market study. Okay, that's a good idea. Um, okay, uh, I also have another update. Um, so Joanne Campbell from Valley CDC, um, who some of you might know, is retiring, uh, and they've hired a new executive director. And Joanne's been a really good friend to the housing partnership for many years. And they are having, did you see this email, Jackie, from Jeff? I saw it come in. I didn't read it yet. So they're having how I roll. some type of surprise <laughs> drive-by retirement parade <laughs> um, on Tuesday, the June 30th at 3 p.m. <sighs> okay. I don't know really, it doesn't really, or, uh, I guess basically it's just like by the office. And oh, yep. they're working on a police detail or something. I don't know. So uh, FYI, if anybody, um, I might be able to go on June 30th. Um, I so. wish I could. Um, but uh Hopefully, Joanne will we'll still see Joanne around. Can you forward that to yes? Somebody? Yes, I will. Forward. This, okay. But it's a surprise, okay? So no leaking. <laughs> she's <laughs> she's my she's actually my neighbor. So is she? Uh, yeah. yeah. So if I had my if I had my volume too loud right now, she could probably hear it. <laughs> um, yes, I will forward it to you after the meeting. Yes, Joanne. Good thing this isn't being recorded. <laughs> right. <laughs> you know um, I am really disappointed that we weren't able to give her a better yeah. send off because she's done an amazing job at Valley CDC. And, um, she took over that organization when it was not in the best financial straits and really built it up into such a powerhouse. Um, it's amazing. Over the past, what, 20, how many? 22 years? Yeah, 22 years. Yeah. yeah. It's really amazing. Oh, so, it's too bad that we couldn't have a party. Yeah, Janet and I were um, supposed to do like a, like a Joanne's retirement event at Galaxy. It was a fundraiser for Valley, and we really wanted to do that. And then pandemic struck, yeah. so... And it was like right in the, it was like in March and we were like, I don't know, maybe we should wait. <laughs> and, and now it just feels like, went went never going to happen. <laughs> nope. But, oh. All right. Does anybody else, do I, what else is on the agenda? I think that's it. Does anyone else have any other updates? Anything from the planning department, Jamie, that we didn't discuss that we should know? Um... So we submitted the, um, the small the micro business emergency loan emergency grant program uh, to the state um, last Friday. Friday it. Um, and we haven't heard back yet. Um, but as soon as we find that out, we'll be posting and there'll be press release and stuff like that. Um, so if anyone knows anyone who runs a micro business, which is five or fewer employees, including the owner or owners, um, and they're, we're doing it uh, cooperative with um, some of the surrounding communities. So the 
owners have to live in one of either East Hampton, South Hampton, West Hampton, South Hadley, and I'm blanking on the other communities, but um, the program would be grants up to $10,000 uh, for eligible business expenses. And, um, giving them a heads up that <clears throat> this will be available um, if we get the grant. Uh, what happened with the um, SMOC capital needs assessment? Does that, did that document get finalized? Kind of forgot. It about did it. not get finalized. Um, I have all the pieces. I'm, it keeps getting moved to the bottom, or things get keep, keep getting added on top of the staff. So I need to just look through that again and finalize it. Um, so that that's on me. Um, okay. Um, sorry but it is. We did get the reports. They did update. So we have narratives and good numbers. Okay. Um, all right. Anybody have anything else? Okay. Nope. Uh, thanks for coming. This is like the shortest meeting ever. It is uh, 631 and I think we can adjourn and we will meet again on July 23rd at 6 p.m. Uh, here on Zoom. <laughs> Lovely. Thank you, everyone. Thank you. All right, bye. Have a good night. Yep, you too.